We believe that we are free, but in a real sense, we aren't. Social and psychological forces have imprisoned us in a transparent cage where we can see reality only with a false lens. What we think is personal is not controlled by us, not even our love and passion. To win the struggle against the odds, one needs a true partner who believes in you and puts his unconditional love in you. Hey guys, my name is Marinda. Growing up in poverty had trained me so much that I stopped cursing. I became so strong that even a single drop didn't come out of my eyes when James divorced me. Or I become emotionless. I couldn't leave my daughter with that junkie. Neither he wanted her, nor could he have taken care of her. We left the town and moved to LA, hoping that I would find a job. The first month was tough for us as we consumed shelter food and spent nights under bridges. Through an opportunity center, I learned that an older man needed a maid. Who knew that it would be the most drastic turn in my life? Now I was no more worried about my little girl, Elisa, because we had a store to live in and a kitchen to kill our hunger. The older man was a friend. His wife had died last summer, and now he felt alone because his sons pay him visits once in a blue moon, and his illness was eating him up. He was lonely, like us. He liked Elisa's small talk. He gave me money for Elisa's schooling. I refused, but he insisted that, at last, she started attending classes. He liked the way she talked to him. He often said, you remind me of my Gina, my granddaughter. One afternoon, while I was mopping the floor, the bell rang. It was unusual because it was out of the schedule, and no one would have liked to visit this ancient mansion, A. Eh? A man in a blue suit with a perfect tie when I opened the door. His hair was turning gray, but he seemed younger. He told me that he had arrived to see his friend. Both men soon were giggling at his witty jokes. Bell rang again. It was Elisa. When she came to see her old friend, he was pinging across the room with his phone glued to his ear. Instead of going towards the older man, she darted towards the man in a suit and circled her arms around him. Her soft lips reverberated. Father. The man finished the call, slipped the phone into his pocket, and squatted to see her blushing face. What's your name? I stepped forward. She is Elisa, my daughter. I'm sorry. My face was red with anger. I grabbed her wrist to take her away. She resisted, but I took her to the room and locked her. Meanwhile, the man left. Two days later, he was there again. Elisa repeated the act, and I learned he liked my little daughter's show. She was asking him to take her for a ride and was constantly apologizing for her actions. Ma'am, my name is Jack, in case you don't know. You can trust me. This kid desperately wants to go outside. If you allow me to... I looked at her and then at the older man. The older man's smile told me that I could trust him. When they left, the old buddy narrated how Jack lost his wife and daughter in a car accident. Then I learned that my daughter was an antidote to his angry feelings. They came back, and he planned dinner for us. Now he was often visiting us and taking me to dinners. I wasn't used to it, and neither wanted to be with him. Maybe because we started feeling for each other. One night, on our way back to the older man's mansion, he told me how much he loved my daughter and me. I started weeping. I didn't want to lose him, but how could I stay with him? He was a billionaire, and I was just a maid. How would people in his surroundings digest our relationship? His family turned against us as soon as they discovered it, but he did what he promised. He didn't leave my daughter and me. Things changed when his mother met Elisa. They started loving us, 